Hello boys and girls, I hope you're ready to get started with our day. Today is February 16, 2021, and we're going to work on some phonics, okay? We've got lots of new sight words to learn today, a new blend and a new digraph, and let's get to it, alright? So, for our first blend that we're learning this week, our new blend that we're learning this week, we have GL. GL G -L says GL. Can you say that with me? Gl, like at the beginning of the word glad or glide. Gl. Okay. And our new digraph, this one only comes at the end of a word. Only at the end of a word. You'll never see this one at the beginning of the word. There's some digraphs that can come at the beginning and the end of a word, but this one only comes at the end. And I think you know it. It's two letters and it says k. What is it? CK. That's right. CK says k. Can you say that with me? CK says k, like at the end of the word duck or lock. We have the digraph k, CK. Because remember, a digraph is two letters that say one sound or that make one sound. We have lots of new sight words. I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to them right away, okay? Here's this first one, and this one I've introduced to some of my students and to some of, of the other students as well. And hopefully you know this one because it's a very important word when we read um, anything that has people talking. It's the word said. Can you say that with me? Said. S-A-I-D. So a lot of times we'll be reading a book and somebody is talking and it'll say said Jane or Jane said, right? This is a really important word that we need to know when we're reading words, when we're reading books with dialogue, words that have people and books that have people talking. The word said. Very good. Here's another word. We've seen this one a lot when we're reading words on the whiteboard or when we're working in our phonics journals. This is the word was. Now it sounds like it has a U, right? We can hear the W, then we hear a, uh, and the A makes the U uh sound and the S makes the Z sound. Just like in the word is, it sounds like there's a Z, but there's not. It's an S, right? Same thing for the word was, was. So you just have to remember, there's no U or Z, it's W-A-S spells was. W-A-S spells was. All right. This one we should know pretty good, right? This is the word say. A-Y is a diphthong, and it together it says A at the end of a word usually. A, like in the word day, we have a y, say. Can you say that? Say, s a y, say. Very good. And the word new, e w at the end of a word. Well, even in, in sometimes in the middle of a word, it says ooh. And, and in the word new, it says ooh. So e w says ooh. Can you say that? Ooh, new, N-E-W, new. All right, four new sight words this week, a new blend, and a new digraph. We've got lots of work to do. Now, you'll be working in your um, own classes with uh, on your sight word pages that you have in your, in your new folder that we sent home. So we won't work too much on these, but I will put them in our stack of sight words that we already do know. Maybe I'll put them at the beginning and we'll go over those first when it's time for sight words. That way we just have a little bit more practice with them. Okay, and you'll work a lot in your homework on the GL blend and the CK digraph. Go and k. Okay, so let's get started with phonics. We're gonna tap out some words first. Are you ready? Sit up tall, focused, ready to learn. Give me all your attention I'm needing to hear you tapping out words and giving me sounds and telling me how many sounds you hear, okay? The first word is the word glad. What's the word? Glad. Fingers up. G. O. A. D. Glad. How many sounds? Four sounds. G. O. A. D. Arm sweep it. G. O. A. D. Glad. Good job. All right. How many how many um, letters do you think is in the word glad? 
We heard four sounds. Do you think there's four letters? Let's see. G, G, O, L, A, A, D. Glad. Four letters, four sounds. Good. The next word is flick. What's the word? Flick. Fingers up. F o I K. Flick. How many sounds do you hear? Four sounds. F o I K. Arm sweep it. F o I K. Flick. Good job. I heard the K at the end of a word. At the end of the word flick, I hear K. So what digraph do we have at the end of the word flick? CK, that's right. So let's spell it out because even though we heard four sounds, we might have more than four letters, right? Okay. F. O. L. I. I. And K. CK, right? K. O. I. K. Flick. So, four sounds, five letters. Good job. The next word is back. What's the word? Back. Fingers up. B. A. K. Back. How many sounds? Only three sounds. B. A. K. Arm sweep it. B. A. K. Back. Good job. All right, let's check the letters on that one. Ready? B. B. A. A. K. At the end of a word is what? C. K. Actually, I'm going my fingers like this. B. A. K. B. A. C. K. So we have three sounds, four letters. Good job. The next word is ship. What's the word? Ship. Fingers up. Sh. I. Ship. How many sounds? Three sounds again. Sh I P. Arm sweep it. Sh I P. Ship. We hear three sounds, but we know that the sound sh is a digraph and it's made with the two letters S H, right? Sh I P. Ship. So, three sounds one, two, three, four letters. Sh S H. I, I, P. Good job. All right. We're done with letter names and sounds. Everybody knows their letter names and sounds, right? So instead of practicing those, we're going to practice the blends and digraphs that we know, okay? So look at my flashcards. You need to be looking at, looking at them to tell me the sound, okay? We'll go with blends first, and our new one is right up in front. Ready? Go. So, ter, ker, fo, bur. Make sure you're looking at that beginning sound and not getting your B's and your D's mixed up. I know a lot of my students do that. Fur, cull. Der. Blends are easy, right? Because you can hear both sounds. We just blend them together. So even if you read them really slow, like g, o, it's still right, but we want to blend them together. You don't really have to think too hard as long as you know your letter names and sounds. You know the sound that this makes. Diagraphs are a little different, right? Because there are two letters that make one sound, and you have to just remember what that sound is, right? But you can do it, no problem. Up first is our new diagraph for this week, okay? Take a look at it. You only see it at the end of a word. K, that's right. Shh. Oh, this is a new one I've been introducing to my students. This is ng. Ng. F. Wa. Er. This may be new to you. Some of my students know this one, though. Ch. And mm. good job. Can come at the beginning or the end of a word, right? Mm. 
Nice work. All right, it's time to work on sight words. Like I said, our new ones are at the beginning and I'm not going through the whole stack anymore. It's too big. We have way too many sight words, so I'm just gonna take half for now and we'll do the other half tomorrow. But at the beginning of our stack of sight words is all of our new sight words, the four new ones, okay? Don't worry if you don't know them yet. I'm going to work with you on them. I'll read it. Just say it back to me, okay? And look at the word so that you can start to connect what you said to the way it looks, okay? Here we go. Said. Good. Was. Say. New, many, a, these ones you should know now, we, from, but, be, where, by, who, the, is, will, how, to, up, on, soon, what, this, and four. Great job. Remember, even though you might feel like you know all of your sight words, it's you need to keep practicing, okay? Really, really get them down. Make sure that there's no doubt that you know those sight words in and out, okay? Sometimes we get a little confident and we're not quite there yet. We need to make sure we really, really keep practicing those sight words, okay? It's time to read some words on the whiteboard. Are you ready? Let's do some blending. I'll see you there. All right, boys and girls, are you ready? Okay, we're going to be reading some words using the new blend, bowl, that we're working on, and the new digraph, k, that we're working on, right? K comes at the end of a word only, right? When you CCK together at the end of a word, it just makes the one sound, okay? So here we go. You know the drill. Follow my marker. Give me the sounds. I want to hear you blending these words. Ready? G. O. E. E says E, like in the word C. G, O, E, Glee. Very good. Okay, next word. Here we go. S, A, K, Sock. Very good. Oh, this has a capital J at the beginning. That must mean it's a name, right? Let's see. J, A, K, Jack. Jack. Just like Jackson in our class, right guys? Jack, good job. Oh, there's a digraph right here. We know this one, TH says, mm. okay. Mm. Uh, d, thud, good work. Okay, your turn on your own, think. Glee, good job, think. Sock. Nice reading. Oh, there's that name. Sound it out. Jack. Good reading. Last word. Think. Thud. Nice reading. Okay. We know these words. Let's read them nice and quick. Okay, here we go. Glee. Make sure you're looking at that beginning sound to get you started on the word, okay? Sock, Jack, Thud. Nice job. Okay, let's read some of these words in a sentence. Well, we read this word. We know it's a name. Jack. Okay, let's read this word. I see it has a bossy E. Okay, let's read it. G, A, M. Gabe. Jack gave, this is a sight word, me. This is a new sight word for this week. What does it say? New. That's right. Our new sight word is new. Jack gave me new p 
it mm, k, pink. Now I know the I sounds like an E. It's just the way it is. Just like in the sound ing, I-N-G, the I makes the E sound in ink. Okay? Pink. Oh, we read this word, or at least part of it. This was the word sock, but this one has an S at the end. Socks. Socks means more than one sock, right? Many socks or a pair of socks, maybe. Jack gave me new pink socks. Jack gave me new pink socks. Jack gave me new pink socks. Let's swoop the sentence. Ready? Jack gave me new pink socks. Jack gave me new pink socks. One more time. Jack gave me new pink socks. Awesome reading. Jack actually did give me new pink socks for Valentine's Day. They've got dinosaurs on them. They're pretty awesome. All right. Let's go and do work in our phonics journals. So get those out and I will meet you there. All right, boys and girls, you should have your phonics journals out. The date written, it is 2-16-21. We're going to get started on the top line, all the way at the top and to the left, okay? We're starting out with a word that begins with a blend. That's our new blend that says goal, goal. What two letters say goal? G, L, very good. The next sound is ah. Uh, and the last sound is a double letter that says SS. -S -S. Very good. All right, let's sound it out together. Are you ready? Goal, ah, uh, gloss. Good job. Below the word gloss. This word begins with the O sound. O. That's right, just an L. Then the next sound is ah, uh, it's an O. And the last sound is a diagraph, two letters that say K. C, K, very good. All right, what's the word? O, A, K, lock. Nice work, below the word lock. This word begins with the N sound, N. N, that's right. The next sound is E. Eh. And the last sound is that digraph again that says K. Two letters that say K at the end of a word. C and K, very good. Awesome job. N, E, eh, K. Neck. Nice writing. Okay. Up at the top of the right side of our page. Ready? This word, actually, I'm going to give you the whole word and we'll, we'll sound it out and get all the letter sounds and write it together. Are you ready? This word is dress. Dress. If you can spell dress, go ahead and go on without me. Okay? If you need help, let's do this together. Dress. What do we hear first? Dr. Dr. We know that blend, right? Dr. Dr. Eh. It's just an E. Very good. And the last sound is another double letter that says S. 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 Very good. Dr. S. Dress. Nice work. Below the word dress. We're going to write the word wren. We've written this word before. We've read it before. Wren. Like the type of bird. This word begins with a digraph. It begins with the digraph, okay? The digraph that says er. What two letters is that? W R. Very good. The next sound is eh. That's an E. Very good. And the last sound is mm. N. Very good. Er. Eh. N. Wren. Good writing. Below the word wren, we're going to write the word flame. Flame. I hear a long A. Okay, are you ready? 
Go ahead and write the word flame if you can do it on your own. I hear full. That blend is FL. Very good. Full. Then A. Then mm. What makes the A say A? A bossy E. Very good. Full A. Mm. Flame. Okay. Our sentence, are you ready? All the way down to our sentence line. So the first one, we're going to start on the top one in case we need to go down to the bottom one, right? So our sentence is going to say, the dress has a flame on the neck. The dress has a flame on the neck. Eight words, ready? This sentence begins with the word the, that's a sight word. And when we start a sentence, we always start with what type of letter? Uppercase, that's right. So T, H, E spells the, the, dress, dress. We already wrote the word dress. There it is. Let's put it in our sentence. The dress. Good work. The dress has. That's a new sight word. Oh no, was is a new sight word. Is has a sight word yet? I don't think it is. Well, I'll help you with it. <sighs> ah, z. And it's not a z. What's that letter at the end of a word that sometimes sounds like a z, but it's not? An s, that's right. Like in the word is and was. The dress has a. That's easy. It's just the letter a has a flame. There's the word flame. We already wrote it. So let's put it in our sentence. Full A. Mm. The dress has a flame. The next word is on. I think I can fit the word on right here. Good, now it's time to go down to the next line. The dress has a flame on the neck. There's the word the again, but we're not starting a new sentence, just a new line. So it's just a lowercase t. On the neck. We already wrote the word neck, didn't we? Right here. So let's put it in our sentence. Mm. Eh. Oops. Uh, let's fix that. That's not very neat. That's okay. Can I erase it and fix it? The dress has a flame on the neck. All right, all done. We need an ending mark though, right? What type of ending mark do we need? It's not asking a question, so all we need here is a period. The dress has a flame on the neck. Great work. You're all done with phonics. You did an awesome job. We're ready to go read a book. I'll see you there. All right, boys and girls, you did awesome with phonics today. I am so proud of you, and I hope you're ready to read a new book. This week, we are talking in journeys all about life science and growing up, right? That's what you're doing right now, right? You're still growing up. You're small. You're, you've got a long way to go, but you're growing, right? Our, our essential question for this week is, how do things change when someone's growing up? Things change a lot when you're growing, right? Not just your body, you get bigger, right? But the way you think, the things you can do on your own, lots of things change. In this book, A Tiger Grows Up, is all about that, maybe not the way a human grows up, but at least the way a tiger does. You can see if there's any similarities between the way you're growing up and the way the tiger grows up. This book is by Anastasia Swen, and it's illustrated by Michael L. Denman and William J. Hewitt. Look at that beautiful illustration. Okay. Welcome to the world of wild animals. Follow a Bengal tiger cub as he grows up in India. 
From playing in the river to hunting in the tall grass, this young tiger quickly learns to live on her own. Deep in the forest, a, tiger, a tiny tiger cub is born. She is much smaller than you were as a baby. The cub has a new brother and a new sister too. The three cubs are helpless. Their mother watches over them in the den. A mother tiger is called a tigress. A baby tiger is called a cub. What does that mean when they say the three cubs are helpless? What does that mean? It means that they can't do anything for themselves. Not yet. Kind of like you were as a baby, like I was as a baby. You have to completely be taken care of, right? At first, all the cub can do is drink milk and sleep. She can't even open her eyes. Her mother must hunt for food. The tigress hides her cubs in the shadows when she leaves. Their stripes blend in with the colors of the forest. Tigers have orange, black, brown, and white stripes. Each tiger has a unique pattern of stripes. Did you know that their, their stripes were unique? Like a fingerprint even. Everybody's fingerprint is different and special just to you. Same thing for the tiger stripes. At just one week old, the small cub tries to stand up. Crash! She falls down. She gets up and tries again. She'll learn soon enough. Young cubs eat and sleep most of the day. They sleep under the trees or in their den. Since the cubs can't walk, the tigress moves them by holding the scruff of their necks. The skin on the cub's neck is loose, so it doesn't hurt. Have you ever seen a cat, Not a, maybe not a tiger, but an, uh, just a regular house cat carry their kittens like that? That's how they carry them. On the prowl, the cub is now three months old and can walk. Oh, she's getting bigger. The tigers bring her cubs meat scraps. The cubs chew the meat with their baby teeth. A tiger cub drinks milk from her mother for about five months. Tigers are mammals. They drink milk from their mother. As they grow older, they become meat eaters or carnivores. We've talked about what a mammal is before, right? And a mammal is an animal that is warm-blooded, drinks milk from its mother, is born live, not hatched from an egg, and has fur, just like you and me. We don't quite have fur, but we have hair, right? Babies drink, human babies drink milk from their mothers. We're warm-blooded, right? Not hatched, and we were born live, we're not hatched from an egg, right? So, just like this tiger, you are a mammal too. At six months old, it's time for the cub's first hunting lesson. The tigress takes the cubs with her on a hunt. They hide in the grass and watch. Tigers can see in the dark. They hunt at dusk or early in the morning. See them watching? The tigress slowly stalks her prey. She hides in the shadows as it comes near. She quickly pounces on an unsuspecting deer. In the morning, the tiger cub plays in the river. Tigers are one of the few cats that like water. Splash! The tiger cub catches a fish and eats it. She's learning to hunt on her own. A tiger drags its prey to a safe place to eat. One deer can feed a tiger for five or six days. Look out! The cubs are now strong enough and fast enough to catch animals by themselves. Look at how big they've gotten. Tiger cubs stay with their mother until they are about two years old. Several female tigers may live within a male tiger's territory, but male tigers do not share their territory with other males. Young tigers often live together after they leave their mother. Soon, they each go off to find their own territories. What is that, a territory? A territory is a, a bit of land that belongs only to you. That's where you live. That's your, your property, right? Territory. 
Mostly animals claim territories. At four years old, the young female tiger is ready to mate and have a family. In her den, the tigress gives birth to three baby cubs, just like her mother did, did for her. The tigress feeds her cubs and keeps them safe. A new family has started in the forest. Females are ready to, to mate at three or four years old. Males are ready at four or five years old. So, tigers definitely grow a lot faster than you and I do, right? It's said that tigers, tiger cubs drink their mother's milk for five months or so, and then they start eating regular food. Um, that's about how long a human baby can drink milk and then start eating regular food too. But it says that a tiger cub can leave the, leaves, usually leaves their mother at around two years old. Did you leave your mother at two years old? No, you're still with your, you still, somebody's still taking care of you, right? You're still with your moms and your dads or your grandparents or whoever it is that cares for you, right? You can't do it on your own. You can't go make money and live all by yourself, right? No way. You're still too young and you've got a long way to go before you can do that. But by four years old, this tiger was ready to have its own babies. They grow much faster than humans do, right? They mature a lot faster and that's okay because we have lots of people that take care of us, we have lots of help as we grow up, and it takes us a little bit longer to get to where we need to be to be on our own, right? But if the goal is the same for tigers or for any other animal as it is for humans, right? Our goal is to grow and learn and become better or, you know, smarter, smart enough to live on our own and to take care of ourselves, right? That's our goal, to be able to take care of ourselves. Right. Okay. That was a great book. Did you like it? It was a lot of great information. I hope you enjoyed it. You did such a great job today with phonics. Thank you for listening to the story and being such great workers. I'm so proud of you. I hope you have a great day. Join me for math if you need to do that. If not, I will see you next week. Have a wonderful week. I love you. Bye.